Hey everyone, it's Vic Vic's Basement Brewcast. Good evening, good morning, whenever you're watching this particular broadcast. That was Cry Freedom by Three Noodle Stew. Yes! That brought us in. I got the name of the band correct. So, uh, so uh, thank you everyone for joining us, uh, for joining us for this show. This is actually the first show post my retirement. So, Whoa. pleased to be here. And we are at a very fun brewery right now. Um, I really want to talk about, first I want to talk, GABF, Great American Beer Festival, is the largest beer festival in the country. Last couple of years it's been virtual, but um, this year uh, this year breweries did submit beers, etc. So uh, GABF, it's uh, usually in Denver, so next year hopefully, 2022, it will be live. So there's about 80,000 beers entered by breweries into the GABF uh, festival. 80,000 beers, and where we are now was selected as gold medal winner in the English Mild category. English Mild and bitter. And labor. we are here at the award-winning brewery, gold medal-winning brewery, mechanical brewing. So. Mechanical right. Brewery, so congratulations. We have with us here today, we have Rick, the head brewer, as well as Leah, the general manager. Now, the one accomplishment I want to talk about is there's, as I said, there's 80,000 beers entered into this festival, and it is very rare for a brewery in their first year of operation. When will the one year anniversary be, Leah? 30 days away. 30 days wow. away. It is very Clocks rare. <laughs> Clocks are ticking. Very rare. <laughs> for, oh, is that, oh, is that what that is? That's our countdown. And there's a countdown uh, on the wall there. Very rare for a first year brewery to actually win a gold medal in GABF. So, congratulations Thank to you. Rick, Leah, and the whole mechanical team. Uh, the owner founder uh, James Griffin couldn't join us uh, join us tonight here, but I actually had a chance to talk to James last year. Actually, before you guys opened, mm -hmm. I were here and we talked about uh, some of the ideas, some of the dreams, and some of the uh, you know some of the uh, activities that you plan for the brewery. So, one year we're here now. Leah, you were actually a a thought in James's mind then, because I think I remember when I was talking to James and Rick, I said, well, do you have like a general manager or something? And they said, we have someone in mind, but we can't say anything right now. So you are what they had in mind. So uh, what do you think about the first year? Okay, tell me about your thoughts. What has been different? Uh, you know, what is unexpected to you and what is expected? Um, I don't think we really, as a whole, came into this year amongst the pandemic with any true expectations. No. Um, we all obviously had goals that we wanted to reach and milestones that we wanted to peak at and all that. And I would say we definitely have reached a lot of those goals despite all of the craziness in this past year. Um, but it's been awesome. It's been so fun. It's very nice to have a job that I look forward to coming to work to every day and working with people that make life fun. Um, you know, I definitely believe that we're all a huge team here and, you know, pull for each other. So it's been a lot of fun. Now, I want to talk about the fun aspect of it. Now, the first, when you walk into this brewery, the first thing that you say that you get is, this is a fun place. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just the colors that are around here. Yeah. We got some bright greens. We got red. We got um, we have chandeliers that are actually uh, the shades are formed out of uh, beer holders, mm -hmm. the beer holders, and we also have uh, the flight crew club mm -hmm. that you have have here at the brewery. But let's go back a little bit more. The name of the the, the brewery is Mechanical Brewery. So. Talk a little bit about the genesis of that name, where it came from, and I know it reflects in a lot of things. A lot of things we're drinking. I'm drinking a lathe lager now. Richard's drinking a torque right now. Everything kind of a mechanical name. So yeah. talk a little bit about that because these are all terms that I know nothing about because I can do Same. nothing mechanically. <laughs> I bleed. I bleed all the time. As you know, my wife is here watching along with my brother-in-law Joe, who's who's on his cross-country trek on his way up to Vermont. So. 
My wife could tell you I bleed if I turn a screwdriver. So talk a little <laughs> bit about where the name mechanical comes from. Um, well, uh, founder James, um, his grandfather was a machinist. And I mean, I think you pointed it out even the last time you were here, you know, all the memorabilia of his grandfather all over the walls, the building, um, you know, our Baltic Porter is named after him. His last name was Skull. So our staple Skull beer, um, which is a core beer, it'll always be on tap. Um, and James himself, I mean, he is so handy. It's unreal. Almost every single thing in this building he has built, touched, created, like his creativity level is just unreal. Like he looks at things and it'd be a blank wall and he'd be like, I'm going to do something with that. And then you come in the next day and it's all redone and it's crazy. But yeah, like the, all the woodworking and stuff, like he has a, a huge woodworking station in his basement, all of our top handles have been made by hand by him wow. um, and on our one year anniversary we will be revealing all new tap handles they are so cool mm -hmm. so excited for them and like you touched on all the fun colors every single one of our beers is also color coded so there's a theme behind that all of our wheat beers have some kind of a yellow aspect in them all of our sours have some kind of a red aspect to them lagers all have green and so on um, so yeah, it's a very colorful place and we definitely have fun emphasizing on that for sure. That shows the short, the kind of engineering background too, that very organized mm -hmm. kind of feel that you get here. Oh yeah, everything has a purpose for sure. <laughs> now, even It goes even so far as the, the brewery tour that mm -hmm. you have. You know, we have the card here which shows the brewing process which is actually posted on the, the little fishbowl window there to look yep. into the brew house so people can see, look in there and see mm -hmm. Rick sweating and working and, <laughs> and picking up those 55 uh, pound uh, grain bags, etc., yeah. malt bags, etc. But even the brewing process is very organized. So, talk about the flight crew membership, if you will. Yeah, for me. so um, New Jersey, you're not really allowed to do mug clubs or anything like that, technically. But we wanted some kind of a way to engage our customers, give them some kind of benefits for being frequent flyers, I guess you could say. Um, so the members that we all currently have, they're now gonna be transitioned into what we will consider our founders members. Um, but for our new up and coming members, there are punch cards. And once you reach your 12 visits, you get to create your little logo, which you have one on our wall, which is great. Um, and they can be included up on that wall with them. They'll get early release access to different beers and um, potentially even small batch releases that no one else will have access to except for them um, and all kinds of different events and stuff like that. So there are some perks and it's exciting for sure. Excellent. And what we're going to do um, after after our break that we take, we're going to let Richard put together mm -hmm. one of his own little membership uh, blanks there. We'll see how well you can coordinate your colors because honestly, <laughs> I, did, I did mine a year ago and I don't know which one on that wall is mine. Actually, really? actually, no, I don't know. I don't remember which one is mine. Actually, you know, I'm going to let my wife take a look at it later, and she <laughs> could probably pick out just by what she knows about me which one is <laughs> is actually mine. And we probably had you sign the back of it too. Yeah, I, I probably it. did. So, so, but then we we'd have to take check. everything down off the wall. Yeah, they yeah. pop right out. Check oh, the back. Oh, okay. We'll have to. We'll have another, to check and another see one which one is ready pack, mine. Uh, beauty, beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, repurposed. Yes. Yeah. It, it just happened to fit right inside. Now, talk a little bit about about um, the design of the brewery and the brew house itself. Rick, were you involved with the actual design that you have in there? Uh, to an extent. Um, the the as, as far as selecting equipment, I had some say, and um, and there was a budget, and you know, I. I, I there was a budget and I, I, I pushed whatever I could out of that to get whatever I could and and concentrated largely on the cold side of, of, of the um, you know the fermentation process and making sure that we had good uh, well constructed jacketed fermenters and that that was the biggest thing that that I needed um, so we sacrificed a little bit on on the on the, on the hot side with the kettle and, and you know the, the, the mash tun and um, those are essentially just big open vessels like you would use you know, mm -hmm. brewing. So so that part of the, the process is not much unlike what you might be doing in, mm -hmm. in your driveway or right. um but yeah, but we so to that to that extent I was able to to help with the design. But as far as the layout and everything goes, um, number one, a lot of that was predicated by 
the bathroom layout. So we were fortunate enough to have existing bathrooms and three of them of, of good size. And um, that was a, a good, obviously a, a, a benefit to us from a cost and time perspective, not having to build out bathrooms. But, but it also limited the layout of the building a little bit and the layout of the brewery. Mm -hmm. So um, it made us have the, the window, the fish, the, the, you know, the fish bowl, mm -hmm. or the fish tank. <laughs> as you had, as, as you had mentioned, yeah. um, that had to be in the location that it's in, not in a different location. And that location happens to be the most narrow part of the brewery, which mm -hmm. so, and that's where all the equipment had to go because that's where you wanted, to, you know, that's where the mm -hmm. excitement is. So it kind of made things a little awkward from a brewing perspective for me for a long time because it was very in a very cramped space and it's a little frustrating too because there's all this other space down the other end that I could have used, but you know, it's not the it's not the window real estate, so. So things have improved a little bit since then, but um, but those sorts of things, you know, I didn't have a lot of control over. So, mm -hmm. uh, but but I, I got what I needed to to you know to, to make beer and and it worked. And rest, obviously, so. you got a gold medal GBF, so you did a pretty <laughs> good job with it. So, Lee, a general manager, what what is the day in the life of a general manager oh, look God. like? <laughs> Coming in expecting to do something and then doing then, something Yeah, getting different. pulled in a million <laughs> other directions. No, I mean, so keeping events booked, keeping us busy, um, all the staffing, hiring, um, scheduling, um, you know, the, the customer service aspect, making sure everyone is happy, um, helping with all the new beer releases, updating all of our untapped menus. Um, you know, Rick and I work very close together in that aspect, so you touched on all the names. I, got, <laughs> I have a whole list from Google of mechanical engineering terms <laughs> that I then incorporate into beer names, and I run in the back, I go, what about this, Rick? Does this sound okay? <laughs> and I usually just get a thumbs up, and he goes, whatever you want, because <laughs> none of us know what any of them mean. Once in a while, yeah. one will, like, seem better yeah. than the other. Once in a while, Rick Sometimes comes to me. Sometimes they speak to us. Yeah, Rick will be like, I have one, and I'm like, yes, <laughs> finally. I don't have to Google anything. And the look yes. on your face whenever I say, oh, I've got a new beer I made, and you're like, oh, no. Now I have to think of a back name. To, back <laughs> to the drawing board, but nah, it's fun. Um, so, you know, taking care of all of that, um, working on my art skills to match James's, because okay. James is very artistic, right, right. and he was the one that was uh, doing all the doodles on the board, but uh, okay. I think I've come a long way on that. But Wonderful. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Okay. Well, thank you, Leah. Now, we're going to take a little bit of break. Mm -hmm. uh, for, from our friends at Brew You, which actually you yes. uh, do work with them at we Brew do. You. We do, we love them. So we'll have a uh, little commercial from Brew You, and then when we come back, Richard will show us his artistic skills. Oh boy. And we will talk <laughs> about momentum and some of the beers here and what might be coming up for the anniversary. So we will be right back. Brew you is the app to send and receive drinks. Buying a drink with Brew you is easy. First, select a recipient, choose the location, and then pick a drink from their menu and send it out. It's easy to stay connected with the people you care about with Brew you. Whether it's a birthday or promotion or just because, sending a drink with Brew you is great for any occasion. When someone buys you a drink, you'll receive a notification with the details and the drink will be stored in the app until you redeem it. When you're ready to redeem a drink, follow the prompts and show the bartender the confirmation screen. Once your drink is received, close it out on the app and say thanks. Then, cheers! You just received your first drink on Brew You. Available for download on the App Store and Google Play Store. Hey everybody, we are back here at Mechanical uh, Brewery, Brewery and Again, I want to talk how, how much fun this is, you know, and it's Halloween season right now, you know, may not be, it's probably going to be after Halloween when you all see this, but you can see, it's such, so cool. We've got gremlins, are, gremlins are all around the brewery here. They're here all year we got, round. We got, we got, we got <laughs> Ruby, Ruby over there next to Johnny. We got, we just got gremlins all over the place yes. with, which Rick can speak to as a, uh, head brewer at a commercial brewery, <laughs> yeah. gremlins get into all of the equipment, yeah. whether you're here or whether you're home brewing. So, uh, we also, we talked about the, um, the flight crew and putting together our little, uh, little round, uh, what do they call it? What do we call that? It was a hop cog. Is, mm -hmm. is hop cog where we got yeah. to play with little Lego type of things and put them together. So, uh, you saw some pictures of, uh, 
of Richard doing his. You know, I actually did mine last year when I did the uh, when I did the article on mechanicals. So uh, if you ever hear at Mechanical Brewery and you can look at the wall and see Richard and mine right next to each other, as we always are. Richard. I'm sorry that any of the residents of Cherry Hill heard me cursing while I was making it. So. Uh. <laughs> Those tweezers, they can be difficult. Right? Yeah, very difficult. It's, tiny it's, like, it's like the playing that operation game, right? <laughs> exactly. Like playing like operation, tiny pieces, right? Just like it. Well, we want to talk about, we're going to talk about beers now with gold medal winning brewer. I, I'm, I'm tired Rick. of talking about beer. I do it all the yeah. time. Well, <laughs> and this is, tell, tell us never, about, never tired. tell us about Momentum. Momentum. Um, so it's, it's an English mild ale, uh, 4% which actually is even a little high for an English mild. Um, a beer, it's a beer style that I've, that I've liked to brew um, and like to drink. So I've brewed over the years. This is probably the third or fourth recipe I've done. Uh, I think the first one was at a homebrew competition where we used uh, cocoa pebbles in, as an ingredient because it was a cereal beer okay. competition. Okay, uh, we've done one of those competitions, yes. And we locked down and got Cocoa yes. Pebbles, because, you know, what, yeah, what yeah. can you do wrong with that? That's good, yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, so yeah, a beer style that I like. And the story with this particular beer is that um, I wanted to try a new yeast. So for the, this first year of being in business, I've experimented with a few different yeasts. I didn't come from another production brewery where I had mm -hmm. yeast strains that I used all the time and had a mm -hmm. comfort level with. I've used certain ones, mm -hmm. I've used many different ones, but it didn't really have anything I was too settled on for the most part, mm -hmm. so. Now Rick, let me let me interrupt there a little sure. bit. You know, we talked that you're not from a commercial brewery. Now when you started here, what was your brewing background? Well, I did, I did do, um, I didn't really do production brewing, so I didn't work in a brewery, I didn't work my way up the ladder to, to be a brewer, like uh, mopping floors and you know, cleaning fermenters. <laughs> and, and cleaning mash tubs out. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Which, you know, didn't necessarily serve me best because I had to learn how to, I mean, cleaning a mash tun out isn't too difficult, but but um, but cleaning fermenters and running cleaning place cycles and that sort of thing uh, was something I had to learn. But um, but I did, I worked at uh, Lunacy Brewing Company in Haddon Heights mm -hmm. for, as, as a one-off brewer. I had the rotating tap essentially um, was open to me to, to go in and try new beers and so I just got to experiment and make something different mm -hmm. every time <clears throat> and then when we landed something with that with the, you know went over well or that we liked I would re-brew it so I kind of had my own tap there for a while mm -hmm. but it was it was all based around my work schedule for my full-time job which um, sometimes didn't permit me to to sure. brew for months at a time, and then sometimes I was able to you know, get in once a week. So it all depended. So, um, so I didn't really have uh, what I used was largely what whatever they had, and I got to order some of my own uh, ingredients and such. But, um, but yeah, so I didn't really have any kind of again like production type background where a lot of production brewers will have a yeast strain that they that they utilize a repitch from 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 fermenter to fermenter. Mm -hmm. um, so that so that's something that I've experimented and played around with for mm -hmm. this first year and tried to find mm -hmm. you know what worked for me. Okay. And in the case of Momentum, there was a there was a yeast. I've been I've been I was searching for an IPA yeast, and um, a lot of the the hazy or New England style IPAs, um, a lot of brewers like to use the offshoot of the Boddington strain, the London 3, or whoever, depending on where it comes from, what, you know, what it's called. So I, I wanted to use that, and there was a, a dry version of it that had come out, and I thought that that would be definitely worthy of experimentation. And I also wanted to experiment with repitching re it, because it's a top cropping yeast, and I have on my three and a half barrel fermenters, I have uh, manways on the top of the fermenter that I can open up and I could top crop, uh, I, could, I could crop from the top of the Mm -hmm. from the top of the fermenter okay. and repitch these that way. So I thought, well, that would be a fun thing to try. Um, ultimately, it's something I wanted to do uh, for production and do it regularly. But uh, so the idea was to take this yeast and then put it in a small session beer and then repitch it into an IPA. So was, what session beer can I make? An English mild. Mm -hmm. And I made up a recipe and brewed it and that was the first batch of momentum. We liked it and we <laughs> submitted it to GAF and GABF. Yeah. That's my old 
roofing industry and they okay. go creeping through the GA. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we we, uh, we we entered it into the Great American Beer Festival and got a gold. So now, how did you pretty, how did, pretty wild How did you learn about the gold medal? Because I know you weren't out there in Denver for <laughs> no, you weren't out there for the <laughs> that was that was, you had right? one job. <laughs> Rick, I was running the tap room yeah. and it was a really busy night. Right. James was out doing what James does, <laughs> and Rick was sitting at home watching the live feed. No, I wasn't feed. sitting at home. No. You were watching the live feed. Wherever you were, you yeah. were watching the live so feed. Let, so let me finish the story. <laughs> Leah got her part right. You had I was one job my, to keep me updated. My daughter's in a high school marching band. We were, we were at a football game uh, at Triton. Uh, I, remember, game. I remember those days very well. <laughs> so I was in the stands watching the football oh. game, listening to the live stream on my phone, and texting Leah every time somebody we knew yeah. won, like all the March one, and then, yep, and, then were, um, and the last one you updated me on was Attic. And Ad, yeah, yep. Attic one. And then he went and then, silent. And then it was then it, then halftime came, and I and I had to get up, and then yeah. my neighbor was there, and I ended up talking to my neighbor, and I stopped listening to the podcast, and then my my I started. My phone started blowing up with text messages. Hey, congratulations. And I'm like, what, what, what are you talking about? Congratulations for what? Literally. So uh, Jay Mahoney from Third State was And I Janet, think the first his one. wife, was the one that texted me. They probably were like, oh, well, <laughs> you text Rick, I'll text Leah. And Leah didn't believe it because she's like, well, Rick would have texted me. Yeah. <laughs> I literally. I, so, it so was yeah, wild. It, was a little, it was a little crazy. It was a wild night. Yeah. But then and James I was, And then up. I started yelling and screaming and cheering, and they just yeah. thought I was cheering for the football team. So it was, you know. <laughs> Well, excellent. A beautiful beer. Very, you, very nice. You. Congratulations. Now, My we have pleasure. a couple of others here. So tell us about what we're drinking right now. This is uh, this time of year. This is October right now that we're actually filming this. Tell us about this beer. Well, you're drinking Diode, and that's a, a Dunkel Weizen. And, um, oh, I know what a Diode is. <laughs> nice. Well, first mechanical somebody, thing I knew. Nice. Sound guy. Somebody Martin. tried to draw the mechanic. The All in on tap. <laughs> He's a gem. Yeah. <laughs> Someone tried to, to draw it with um, like their key, phone. keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> like equal signs and a D. Like something and like that. <laughs> it's pretty good. But uh, but yeah, that that uh, that was our fall our, mm -hmm. our fall release. Sure. Our, our yeah. fall That's seasonal fair. kickoff mm -hmm. release, and it's it's brewed with uh, malts from. Um, from Deer Creek Malting okay. in uh, Glen Mills, PA. Okay. And it's, it's the first beer we did with uh, any kind of local, first time beer I've ever brewed with any kind of local malt. I've always used whatever mm -hmm. I could get from large distributors or, or um, homebrew stores or whatever. So that was a, that was a, that was a pretty cool thing mm -hmm. in my opinion. It's something I really want to do a lot more of in this next year mm -hmm. coming. Uh, we talked to uh, Hillary at, at um, Rabbit Hill. The Rabbit Hill, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be, you know, after we get past these next couple months, I plan on working with them a little bit on some great. beers. They're great on yeah. yeah, she she's 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 she seems awesome. And um, yeah, we had a nice conversation. I'm looking forward to, to working with them. Really Have you been nice. over there? No, not yet. Oh, it's awesome over there. I, I, yeah, I'm excited really cool. to go and cool. check it out. She mm -hmm. she invited us, and and I would definitely be. Be mm -hmm. taking her up on that. Yeah, nice. A lot of nice sweetness to this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I've heard. I've heard a few people mention that the sweetness. It's been very, very nice. Very I'm good. Not, I'm not normally like in, into the sweet sweetness in beers or excessively, well, but it's but it's well balanced. I believe. Mm -hmm. Very um, nice. Yep, very the, nice. The, 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 the sweetness comes from, the from the malt. You can like actually taste it. Cuts it. Cuts cuts it at the at the point where it might start mm -hmm. to feel too sweet. Yeah. Now this beer has been extremely popular. Like it's already almost gone. Like it, oh, I feel wonderful. like it went on tap, and now it's going to be off tap. Yeah, I love it. It's uh, been really moving. Excellent, excellent. Now mm -hmm. this third one I know here. This is uh, your Imperial Pilsner. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice and clear. This is what a Pilsner should look like. Nice and clear. But something somewhat unusual, unusual about this Pilsner is what's the ABV on it? 7.7. .7. Whoa. <laughs> right? Yeah, wow. actually, it's tapped. Mm. And um, this batch is like a 7.3 or something. Very, very nice. Very nice. And this is a drink like it. And this one is, <laughs> and this is called? Pinion. Pinion. Yep, which probably is my a, favorite beer on tap, honestly. Another mechanic, and this is something you could sit and drink. Yep. This is nice summertime. Oh, yeah. This is like an all-year mm. type of beer. Nice, nice pilsner. Yeah, Very probably nice. will be in all year. Yeah, um, it, yeah the first batch really took off tremendously, 
Excellent. So I was excited when he was like, I got another one in the tank. I'm like, thank God we're about to run out. <laughs> yeah, once in a while that happens, right? Yeah, it's been really popular for sure, so. Excellent, all three excellent, excellent beers. Now you got an anniversary coming up. Um, 30 days, nine minutes and four seconds. Am I reading that correctly? Oh, yeah, oh, so. Is correct. it? 30 days? So what's so planned for the anniversary? Crazy. Any special releases coming out that you can talk about or you want to keep it uh, under your hat right now? Uh, I, I guess know, you could a... talk about anti Kythera. Yeah. Like, that, that's yeah. one that he brewed before opening and was on tap for, I would say, the first like month or so of us being mm -hmm. open. It's the kettled sour red and ale. What is that called? <gasps> anti Kythera. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's just like one of the most unique beers I've ever had. Like, I remember when I first started working here, I was like, we have a what? <laughs> and yeah. it took off and it was very popular and it hasn't been on tap since like our opening month. So, really? So, yeah, it's yeah. Ex I'm excited to have that back. Beautiful, An anti beautiful Anti-Kythera. Sounds like one of the characters from Dune. <laughs> Anti-Kythera. Okay, it's, it's, it's an ancient, uh, it's, it's a mechanical device that was used by the ancient Greeks mm -hmm. and it was they found one in the bottom of the Mediterranean okay. Sea. Oh, and yeah, yeah, I know what you're it was, yeah. It, it, They were able to predict the mm -hmm. um, the uh, movement of planets and, and is that what that is? Planetary I think movements. I remember. Yeah. I've gone like, a whole year to, not knowing what this means. They were able to predict <laughs> for like ten thousand years out, like the what? position of the planets. Is it a bunch I've gone of a whole this, year not knowing this. Essentially, a computer. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, you know what I did? I remember talking to James about that when I was yeah, here before you opened. Because it was probably on open. tap when you Because it was on tap before. then. So yep. great. Okay, we are going to start wrapping up uh, now. So mechanical brewery. Tell us where can everyone find you and uh, social media, all of that kind of stuff. So, well, Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, mechanicalbrewery.com. Mm -hmm. um, my Instagram handle is pint size Leah. I try to keep my personal as updated as possible with all of our releases and everything, and new beers on tap as well. Mm -hmm. um, Otherwise, five Priena Boulevard, Cherry Hill, yep. New Jersey. <laughs> okay, great. Rick, Leah, it's been fantastic being here. Beers Thanks. are great. Congratulations again on the medal. Richard, anything to finish off with? Everything's been awesome. Everything has been yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah, so. He's left nothing behind. I love it. He did. He's good. So <laughs> He's remember, SouthJerseyBeerScene.com, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram. Check out, please check out our YouTube channel for shows like this one, Vic's Basement uh, Brewcast, as well as Alexis Drink and Drinks and other special shows coming up on there so um also my own so leah's pint size leah <laughs> also you can check out vic's basement brew and see what kind of shenanigans i'm up to on the brewing side so with that thank you all for joining us uh remember youtube south jersey beer scene make sure you subscribe to this and other shows so with that thank you guys so much for having us thank you guys for being everyone here. cheers have a good night <laughs>